At 11.39 Eastern Standard Time, January 28, 1986, the unthinkable happened. The space shuttle Challenger exploded. By now, we are all too familiar with the horrible scene. But few know the agonizing details of those final minutes, the shrouded saga of the Challenger crew cabin. The Challenger space shuttle started out as a test vehicle, part of NASA's program to develop a reusable manned space vehicle. But in 1979, NASA gave Rockwell International, one of the three major contractors for the shuttle program, the go-ahead to make the ship space ready. The test version needed a few updates. For one thing, it only had a simulated crew module. The crew cabin area was designed very similar to a thermos, where it had an inner skin and an outer skin, because that's the area that, that protects the astronauts when they're in space. On April 4th, 1983, after four years of work, the 175,111-pound shuttle with its brand new three-tiered pressure-sealed crew compartment rolled out for its first mission. The shuttle, our space-age plane, became a familiar sight, transporting astronauts to space and back with increasing frequency and ease. The crew of Challenger Mission 51L had no reason to believe their trip would be any different. The Challenger 7, as they have come to be known, included high school teacher Krista McAuliffe, the first participant in the Teacher in Space program. Excitement was in the brisk air late that January morning. When the shuttle roared off the pad, everything seemed fine until 73 seconds later. Pilot Mike Smith glanced out of the window and muttered, uh-oh, it was the last we would hear from the Challenger 7. After the explosion, the crew compartment, still virtually intact, separated from the rest of the shuttle and plummeted 65,000 feet to the Atlantic. It slammed into the ocean at 204 miles an hour. Death was instantaneous. A nation mourned its fallen astronauts. But that was far from the end of the story. It took close to three minutes for the Challenger to fall into eternity. How had the crew spent those last minutes? The search for answers was on. The crushed crew compartment was among the thousands of pieces of scattered debris. The largest ever marine salvage operation to date, 22 ships, six submersibles, and 33 aircraft recovered the spacecraft, piece by piece. But they couldn't locate the crew compartment. In that particular part of the ocean off the Cape, it is a very irregular surface on the bottom. Uh, the sand, ridges, uh, small reefs, other debris. Also, it's in an area where you have violent uh, tides and currents. A full month went by before divers found it. It was lying at a depth of 90 feet, 20 miles off the coast of Florida, with the astronauts inside. From a personal perspective, I shared a lot of the same feelings that everyone else did. Uh, we had a job to do, a very important job, and that was to determine what happened. They returned the compartment to the logistics building at Kennedy Space Center. The futuristic module had turned into a sea of twisted metal. Investigators began the grim task of conducting the crew's post-mortem. At first, NASA believed the shuttle crew had died instantly with the explosion. But it became clear that wasn't the case. At least two, if not all, of the astronauts were very likely alive during their two-minute and 45-second drop into the sea. The emergency air tanks offer some clues. There were two of the air packs on which the pressure gauges uh, were re re recovered. The pressure at the time of impact was between uh, three-quarters and seven-eighths used. So the number of seconds that the crew may have retained consciousness would be a function of how rapidly the crew module lost pressure. But there was no evidence that the module had lost pressure. What NASA said, the quiet truth, was that the crew compartment kept the astronauts alive after the explosion. The crew may have known they were headed for certain doom. We could not exclude that possibility with definite data. We may never know for sure what the final minutes were like for the Challenger 7. A special presidential commission found that faulty O-rings caused the explosion, but investigators deemed the evidence and the cause of death inconclusive. 
A year after the accident, NASA provided a quiet burial for the Challenger crew compartment. In January 1987, it was transported to abandoned Launch Complex 3132 at Cape Canaveral Air Station, where it was sealed in an 80-foot deep Minuteman missile silo. The remains of the Challenger crew compartment still reside in a missile silo at Cape Canaveral in Titusville, Florida, across the river from its launch site. It is expected to be stored there indefinitely.